Okay, so let's move on to question number four. Construct a simulated HNMR spectrum for methyl propanoate by dragging and dropping the appropriate splitting patterns into the box will shift baseline and by dragging integration values into the small box above each signal items may be used more than once and the peak heights do not represent integration okay so this is an hnmr question so let me write out the structure of the methyl propanoate And when you want to answer HNMR questions and you're given like a structure, um, I like to first identify what kind of hydrogens are on, um, what kind of hydrogens are present. So let me actually write this out as like a CH2. And then if you look at each of the different hydrogens, we want to look at all of the chemically non-equivalent protons because that's how many signals we will have. So let me write that down. The number of signals that we see is equal to the number of chemically non-equivalent hydrogens. Uh, so basically, let's look at all the different hydrogens that we have in methyl propanoate. We have like a methyl group here. And those hydrogens are in a different chemical environment than these hydrogens because this is on a carbon that's attached to a carbon that's double bonded with an oxygen. And similarly, the hydrogens on this methyl will be different as well because it is attached to just a single oxygen. So let me label these hydrogens as A, B, C. And now we're going to first talk about like splitting patterns. So when you have splitting, we're going to do the N plus one rule, where N is like your number of neighbors. So this all makes sense once I start actually writing it down. In terms of shifting, depending on where they are, like what their environment is, they'll all have a different shift. So let's look at A. We have just like your normal, like carb carbon attached to like a hydrogen. Nothing else is like affecting it. Um, if you were to look this up at like a HNMR shifting table, you'll see that this signal usually occurs at around like 1.2 ppm. So we can do the same uh, for the hydrogens in B. So we can write it out as like where there's a double bonded carbon and it's going to be the hydrogens here. They typically have shift of 2.4 ppm. And then lastly, for C, it's B, 
basically the hydrogens on the other end of like an ether group. And they typically have a shift of like 3.5 ppm. So these are values that you would just be given in like a table. So let me draw out just like a rough HNMR spectra. Give myself some space. And I'm going to start at like the 4 because that's just where everything takes place. This is PPN. And now I'm just going to be um, looking at how each of these hydrogens should split. So let's start with A. If you look at its neighbors, there are two hydrogens. So if we do the n plus 1 rule, then this should split as a triplet. So it's 2 plus 1. And then let's look at the hydrogens in B. Its neighbors, it has three hydrogens. So n plus 1, it'll split as a quartet. And then for the last one, there are no hydrogens on this oxygen. Uh, so 0 plus 1, it'll split as a singlet. And then now that I know its splitting patterns, I can put it um, on the spectrum. So the one that splits as a singlet, I'll draw here. Oh wait, I said 3.5 ish. That was not a straight line. And its integration value will be 3H. So that's just how many hydrogens are with that peak. And then let's look at the one that splits as a quartet. It is at around 2.4 ppm. I'm just going to draw it splitting like this. And there's only two hydrogens, so its integration value is 2H. And then lastly, for the hydrogens in A, it'll split as a triplet at around like 1.2 ppm. I'm just going to do like a triplet there. And its integration is 3H. So let's look at the answer from our junior tutor. They drew out all the different uh, hydrogens that are present. They talked about the splitting and using the N plus rule. And then they have our singlet here. And then, yep, our 2H quartet around here and then the 3H triplet there. So this solution is correct. So an HNMR spectra actually tells you a lot of things. Uh, just take some practice to try and analyze the different spectrum. But they're really...